Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, All in Crypto here and welcome back guys on this smashing Saturday for what is going to be another jam-packed daily cryptocurrency market update. As always, if you are new to this channel and finding yourself on my videos for the first time today, don't forget to check out that subscribe button because we drop an update just like this one around 1pm UK time every single day, I know I'm slightly later today, to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space but also the broader markets. That's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. Yesterday, we focused on some of the kind of macro headwinds on the short term that was actually plaguing the markets in regards to uh, rate forecasts, in regards to uncertainty around inflation. It's putting a bit of a dampener on markets as they're kind of readjusting and uncertainty is something, it's really the biggest enemy of uh, markets more broadly, certainly risk markets and we see the dollar getting a bid, we see oil getting a bid. Um, we're going to be talking about that a little bit because we did actually have another Fed member come out uh, and it was Fed Governor Bowman saying additional rate hikes may be needed if inflation stays high. Now, I just think they're talking a very uh, tough talk. I don't think they're going to be doing that. We've looked at the implications of leaving rates where they are. The expenditure of the Fed would go to $500 billion. If they cut rates by 1.5%, it would drop to $100 billion. So both sides of this sword are kind of inflationary. I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole too much, um, but we will just be looking at that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be playing a really interesting clip from Neil Kashkari, who is one of the Fed members. He's been a pretty hawkish Fed member, actually. He was actually asked a question recently on Bitcoin and the Fed adding it to their balance sheet. I want to play his response to you guys to start the video off. And remember, he is a member of the Federal Reserve which is essentially the um, custodian, the guardian of the dollar. So his response, I think, uh, is kind of what you would expect. We're going to be talking about global liquidity, which gives us that kind of macro narrative. We think this is supported by the bond market and things like that. We are actually looking at buybacks in regards to treasuries, 200 million first, and then this will snowball. We think that's why TLT's done well and the Fed's going to be the buyer of that. We're getting a lot more confirmation on our kind of macro backdrop to why markets do well in regards to liquidity being injected. I did do a longer video on this yesterday, but I want to talk about Genesis, who have been probably one of the main reasons we've seen the kind of volume in regards to outflows that we have for Grayscale Spot Bitcoin ETF. Obviously, Genesis was caught up with FTX and the whole bear market and went bankrupt. And part of them uh, recouping funds is selling their holdings and they, and they had a, a large holding, $2.1 billion worth of um, grayscale GBTC when it was a trust and that's obviously carried through. So they've been one of the large issuance. They've actually ran out of Bitcoin to sell or, 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 or the um, GBTC to sell. Now that's happened at the same time that we now see Citadel, Goldman Sachs and UBS and Citigroup entering the Bitcoin market. And then we'll talk a little bit about regulation. So we've got a lot to get into guys, as always. Let's start things off and we'll look at the charts, of course, um, with a clip that I found of Kashkari answering a question from Gen Jennifer Ablam when asked if the Fed is going to add Bitcoin to their balance sheet because they have an unlimited amount of money. So I, 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 I shouldn't ask this next question, but I will. I came from a reader. When will the, when will the Fed put Bitcoin on its balance sheet? You, you've already said on record that you have unlimited, you have an unlimited supply of dollars. Doesn't it make sense to trade some of them for a currency with a hard cap? Yeah, what is that hard cap? I mean, the hard cap, I guess, for, is zero for Bitcoin. It could go down to zero. Uh, it's um, it, it, it just replace the words uh, Bitcoin with Beanie Babies. You know, should the Fed buy Beanie Babies? Because Beanie Babies were a fad for a while, had no actual utility in the economy, other than they were a nice toy that some people enjoyed owning and trading. Uh, I always ask people, is there any... Has anybody actually bought anything with Bitcoin? And Bitcoin enthusiasts will say, oh, yes, I bought something. But I'm talking about in mainstream America, when I travel around and I give talks, I always ask the audience, has anybody in this audience ever bought something with Bitcoin? A sandwich, a cell phone, a book, and nobody ever has. It's the only use case that I can come up with, except for the evangelists who, who contort themselves to try to find use cases. In the real world, the only use cases that I've seen are trying to subvert banking regulations. You know, get around either marijuana banking or other or illicit activities, et cetera. Uh, I don't think subverting banking regulations is a legitimate use case. Uh, and until you now, one other thing I'll say, the Bitcoin bros who are watching this right now are saying, oh, you're a Neanderthal. This is like uh, you, you'd say in 1994, nobody ever bought a book on, on online. So Amazon has no future. This is not Amazon in 1994. This is Amazon in 2004. 
Bitcoin's been around for more than a decade, and more than a decade later, there's still no legitimate use case in uh, in a democracy, uh, an advanced democracy. And so, how many years do you need uh, to test this out until there's going to be some usefulness other than the Bitcoin Bros? It's like a religious uh, revival uh, for, for some folks. So, uh, my skepticism, unfortunately, has only grown. So I think we can safely say that the Fed probably aren't going to be adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet anytime soon. And Kaskari actually brought up a good point in regards to uh, Bitcoin, in my opinion, isn't applicable as a currency. It's simply not. You couldn't use it as a currency on a global scale. I think that's a fact at this point. And I'm sure somebody's going to try and argue with me in the comment section and tell me how a whopping four transactions a second could facilitate a global uh, currency. But hey ho, maybe we just disagree on that. We, we don't need to get into the weaves of it. Um, but he compares, he, 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 remember, Kashkari is a Fed member. They are in charge of the dollar, okay? They want the dollar to succeed. It's where the US derives a lot of its power from, if not all of it, um, and ultimately can manipulate the world as a result of it. And you guys living in the US, us in the West, you know, across the world. Um, but he's kind of, you know, what's the use case for Bitcoin? Well, the use case for Bitcoin is to uh, essentially hedge the destruction that, members like him are doing to the world in regards to the proliferation and the great leveling to serfdom of the um, people uh, through the proliferation of the fiat systems. And this is the great game. There's no red and blue pill in regards to the matrix that we are currently in. There is the choice between uh, fiat and assets. And assets will um, set you free from a financial point of view. Uh, I really do believe that because it's the great game of monopoly. Um, and even in the game of Monopoly, the, the, the goal is to buy the assets up so you can get that residual income and, and, and so on and so forth and not have to pay it on every point. But let's move on. Uh, very interesting. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section. We also had Fed Governor Bowman came, come out yesterday, actually, and this is following the video that we did uh, yesterday morning, saying additional rate hikes could be needed if inflation stays high. I think that's obvious. And I think actually this is what the kind of stalling in markets and the repricing of rates uh, has really been driven from is the fact that We've got this really good data. Yesterday, we had non-farm payroll that really supports um, the Fed keeping rates where they are and actually could if you saw inflation spiking. And remember, it's only really oil, but we've looked at the correlation between oil and the dollar yesterday, which of course leans on risk. Um, the Fed, if they wanted to, could up rates. I do think that's plausible. I'm just not in that camp. I'm not in the higher rates camp. I mean, the potentially keeping them where they are for longer camp. We went into this year and said, look, people have got rate and the, I think it was six, rate hikes that were priced in going into 2024 wrong. I don't think they're gonna be as forthcoming with that. They don't need to with this data. Um, but I do think they're gonna lower rates because both sides of this equation are now inflationary. You keep rates where they are, you've got to fund that debt at that level, which comes in the form of the proliferation of debt, which is all money is, is debt. If you lower rates, borrowing becomes more forthcoming. Both sides, the, the system is done and they're walking a tightrope right now. Um, remember, we've got this macro backdrop that we think is supported by a number of things, but this is Global Liquidity Index, uh, long-term five to six year cycle. And you can see where we are. Uh, you know, I believe we've got uh, a good time ahead of us, which is baked into the Bitcoin four year cycle theory and where we think crypto is going. And we've got lots of targets that kind of, uh, you know, we've still got that $151,000 target for Bitcoin. Um, I don't think Bitcoin looks too bad actually here. I think this is gonna squeeze in a bull pen esque fa fashion. And you could potentially be looking at a run to the 80Ks. Um, remember, we're looking for that right shoulder to form on the total two. Um, you know, there's lots of cross market support here. Also, if you look at Bitcoin against gold, the SPY, it's just running into resistance, having a pullback, but it's in a broader uptrend in a, in a kind of uh, space, the risk asset space, which I think is going to do well and is going to be very supported by the macro context. So we think that the kind of stuff that you're seeing in regards to macro and, and rates and this and that, it's short lived, um, in my opinion. Um, it's just a short term hump. It's tax season. It's a kind of draining from, you know, when you think about people having to pay tax, it goes to the treasury account. It's kind of a draining of liquidity, but that liquidity will get dispersed again, I do believe. Uh, so there's, it's just a short term hump that we're currently going through. This is the total two. We still don't see people talking about this. We've got this going to $3.7 trillion. It's currently at one. So that's over three X. Lots of setups for altcoins that we're really liking at the moment. HBAR is still one of my favorites in regards to perfect break and uh, retest uh, structure. Uh, and we've even got, and this is actually brought up by a community member of mine, USD dominance that we think is heading down um, that supports crypto also I'm not a big fan of, or I, I believe Bitcoin dominance is gonna roll. I think we're gonna see, we haven't really seen alt season yet. Onto some 
in other interesting news, I did actually make a video on this yesterday. Just in, Genesis has finished selling their $2.1 billion of Grayscale Bitcoin ETF holdings. So Grayscale have been the biggest seller through Grayscale's vehicles or, or one of the biggest contributors to the outflows that we've seen in regards to the Bitcoin spot ETFs. Now they have just sold all of their Bitcoin. And remember, they were a part of or involved in the FTX sort of thing. And, and, and you know, they gone bankrupt. And part of them selling was to recoup funds for creditors and uh, investors. At the same time, you had this happen. You also have just in BlackRock updates, it's Bitcoin ETF uh, prospectus with many new authorized partners, uh, participants, including first timers, Citadel, Goldman Sachs, UBS and Citigroup. Take away big firms now want a piece of the action and or are okay with being publicly associated with this. So why are they doing that at this point if Bitcoin, you know, was going to die and fall on its knees? You already know that Bitcoin's the fastest growing ETF ever in existence. That's likely going to continue. There's going to be broader spillover to the crypto space once we get really the altcoin space, once we get kind of over a regulatory hump, which I do think we're going to get over. I believe we are going to get an ETH, uh, ETF based on what we're seeing in regards to ETH dominance and also ETH BTC. So we've rammed a lot into one update, guys. Uh, the last little thing that I wanted to sort of show is this is from Paul uh, Grewal, obviously the chief legal officer over at Coinbase. We appreciate the second circuit confirmation today. What is clear under the federal securities laws, there's no private liability for the secondary trading of digital assets on exchanges like Coinbase. Why? Because contracts matter. Um, so we are getting closer to kind of finish on a bit of regulatory news to that regulatory clarity. But I do believe it is coming and going to see all season really flourish and come into its own. Guys and girls, that's all I've got for you. Uh, if you want to become a patron, there is a link in the description. I think we've only got something like 15 more spots before we close it up again. Um, yeah, always a pleasure. Have a smashing Saturday and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next.